Dear Starshines, it's Sylvia Moonbeam and Mo Flame. We have some questions for you. <laughs> or for us. <laughs> I'm good at this. <laughs> so we're we're at we're we're interviewing each other for two videos I'm doing. And also to plug your shit, because you're a good author. Oh gosh, yeah. And uh, I'm gonna put a link here and then in the description. Go check out her shit. I have questions for you because you're my DM about DM things. Also, yes. So this will be fun. Yes. I, um, we, we have an evil campaign called the Wild Scar. Uh, evil campaign. I know. No one's actually really evil. I mean, kind of, sort of. Jaxus sometimes. is evil. Jaxus is evil. Jaxus is, is chaotic evil and we all know it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's a game that I've DM'd for... Like a year and a half. But yeah, and Sylvia plays the lovely Tiefling Inquisitor, Proctor Cinnabar Cervantes. Oh, so in our own campaign of Wild Scar, you have a lot of characters. I lots do. of. And like, they're all. Um, they're all really good characters. You could write a fucking book. Thank you. Could, you. you could turn Wild Scar into a book, and all of your characters would be very good. And I'm not just saying that because you're next to me on a couch. I enjoy all of your, <laughs> I enjoy all of your characters. Thank you. I appreciate. Like that. I, I know jack shit about Kajan, and I love Kajan. <laughs> so, of all of your NPCs, who's your favorite to play as? So, what's interesting about Wild Scar and possibly why most of the characters are so good. So the main so the main place it takes place in is Aurora Hills and I have filled it with old player characters of mine because I wanted to relive playing them. So while my your Wild Scar is basically my fae. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um but the character I think I enjoy playing the most was not an old character of mine. He was a brand new one. And it was, uh, it is uh, Sigil, the sylph bartender. Really? I think because I kind of relate to him because how I made him was just that, like, he's just there. He's super chill. He hears everything because, you know, the saloon is, like, a really popular place. People gossip. And he just serves drinks, and he's a real nice guy, and he and he hears everything. He just gets all that tea. All the tea. And I oh, relate to it, because I'm just like, I see everything, I know what's going on, but yeah. I don't interfere most of the yeah. time. <laughs> I just, you know, I was expecting you to say, like, Fendez, or Falmia, or Claudio. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting you to just go, hey, you know that one gay bartender who everyone <laughs> loves? Yeah, him. <laughs> He's great. I love playing him. He is a he is a very fun character. I think I've only had like one conversation with him, and it was buying wine. It's a chill, fun person, and I have expanded his backstory some because oh. Kane talks to him, so there is some backstory yeah. there. And um, yeah, you know, the, he's just... the weird Kane Magnus sigil mysterious triangle going on. Oh my gosh! Yes. He has... Um, I legit thought Kane had the hots for Magnus. I know, that was hilarious. And it was just like, nah, I'm trying to hate, I'm trying to hook you up with the bartender. It was adorable. Yeah, because Sigil said that he had a crush on Magnus, and so Kane was trying to subtly, not subtly, be and like... And kiss. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then Lily harassed Magnus. And Magnus was like, girl, I am over 300 years old. I do not need your shit. Uh, so... I've noticed you don't give tend to give away a lot of like magical items. Um, I know with when I'm DMing, mm -hmm. I'm one of those like, yeah, I don't give out a lot, like I don't give out a lot of loot when mm -hmm. I'm DMing. Um, spoiler to you because you're in my campaign. <laughs> but <laughs> the loot I do give out always has cool abilities because mm -hmm. it's like I want it's like the one thing I want like if you get one thing I want to make it count, mm -hmm. and if you don't like it, you sell it to get the thing you want. Okay. Um, so, at least that's how I DM. Mm -hmm. um, so, to my memory, there's my Spine Flail, mm -hmm. which is also ridiculously overpowered. Why yeah. did you give me that? It's such an OP weapon for our level. Because... Like, that's like a level 10 item. So, to answer that question really fast, 
It's because I knew that from the last question, or rather in my question segment asking you, um, you talked about Cinnabar's morality being shaken due to that case. Yeah. And so to kind of make up for that... <laughs> You're I, a terrible person. Here's a gift. Yeah, that was the thing. Because <laughs> it, is a, it is an evil campaign, so I was kind of like, you know, you could continue along this evil path and still get really cool shit, or you can try to become a better person. So it's like, you know, the temptation of both ways. So, yeah, so there's... There's my spine flail, the Mists of Stones, which Mists of Stones are just super useful. They're very useful. Uh, that was honestly great. And um, and then technically you gave us weapons when we were at the Temple of uh, Iomede, mm -hmm. but that was like a everyone did shit, and so everyone- That was your idea too. It wasn't my idea to like give them all a plus one buff, was it? No, you- Tried to get everyone to put their weapons down on the altar. Oh, well, yeah, because it, it, it had, like, the sin Yeah, sinless. and it wasn't the answer to the riddle, but I was, like, so thrilled that everyone got along for once. I was like, I have to reward this. <laughs> yeah, so, and I, I don't know, you probably have given out other cool shit. Uh, Kaumea I, gave Syrian goggles of minute scene. Oh, mm -hmm. I thought they were just goggles. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, okay, minute scene. What is wrong with um, that was again? It allows you to see the smaller intricacies, so it gives a bonus to um, disable device. Oh, okay, because he's constantly doing shit on its yes. gun. Okay. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, other than other okay, then other than those four instances, mm -hmm. I can't think of any like special items you've given out. So, uh, is are you just not a fan of giving it like magic items or? So, and I believe people have bought items also, but yeah, people have bought items, but that's a little bit. Different. Yeah. It's it's not like a, it's not a loot. It's right. just a, it's a, you bought it. Yeah. yeah. So I think in this world specifically, magic items aren't super common, um, at least outside of the empire, because the <clears throat> empire is very industrious. You have the arcane key, which is the magic guild. Um, I have like steampunk oh. stuff and crystals so and hang, everything. So if I hang out with Claudia more, I'll get magic shit? Probably, honestly. But in the scar itself, you have to go, like, there was a bunch of magic items in the Temple of Iomade. Which and we're you, probably going to go back there something. Yeah, I, I left it open <clears throat> so you guys could go back, because you did the trials, you got those items from there, like, Kane got the brooch. Um, oh, I forgot she had that brooch. She got the brooch, Jaxus got the dagger, and oh. uh, Syrian got that lens for Arabella. Yeah. But there are other but, items still there, so uh, I, it's not that I don't like giving them it's just that magic items are also they're just so a lot of the pathfinder ones are really good they're really powerful and they're also very expensive well so the reason so pathfinder has magic items as being so expensive because they um it's basically a they, they also like i don't know if you've noticed but like everyone basically is like a crafting cop like a yeah. crafting because um, Pathfinder, since it's really into, they like put a lot into crafting. Mm -hmm. You could in in theory, you could craft any weapon, any item that exists in the game, mm. as long as you have access to certain spells or certain items. Right. Uh, so like you could literally be like, you have that spell, you have that spell. I have a helmet and five thousand gold. Let's put them all in one pile, and yeah. then boom, magic helmet. Like yeah. So crafting, and like no one really does magical crafting yet. So I try to, like, lower the prices. Oh, and then also Jax has got that gasping pearl that he has yet to use. I'm sorry, what? He picked up a pearl in the temple and it gasped for air and he was like, what is this? I don't remember this, but yeah. I am strangely intrigued. Yep, I'm sure he'll use it eventually. But... Oh, I'm sure. So, yeah, there are, there are lots of cool items, but also I like giving mundane items that might have like sentimental value or possibly other just like it's cool things head. about them so that's just my thing on magic <clears throat> weapons because i also know if i give out a bunch of magic weapons too early it's gonna come back to bite me in the ass eventually <laughs> <laughs> and also i just i like showering magic items because i like people having toys and then if they fuck me up that's my own fault because <laughs> it's just fun i i like being hoisted by my own petard, I guess. <laughs> Self, self-deprecating a little bit. <laughs> right. So, 
Uh, yeah, DMing a large group can be challenging. Yes. Um, I, uh, I'm capping, I, I usually cap at four or five players. Mm -hmm. I think my largest party was, I think, six for, like, one session. They immediately just left. Um, you, when Bobby comes back, will have seven. And technically, if you count everyone who has ever been in this party, I think you've had, like, nine or ten players. How do you, how do you manage that? And... Do you have a hard cap of how many people you'd be willing to accept? So, my main thing with big groups is that I have a hard time saying no when people want to play. Because I feel bad. Because I'm like, I want to include everybody, you know. But, um, I think the largest party I had was eight. Um, and that was a big challenge. It was kind of less so because Wild Scar is text-based. So it was a lot easier to kind of keep track of people, especially, like, the people who weren't really as active. So it was like we had a lot of people, but it kind of felt smaller just because people were busy. Like, Kyle especially. I I'm kind of more just kind of curious of, like, if this was at an actual table, how many people you would want, and then trying to figure out who basically would have been there then? Because, like, trying to figure out who you wouldn't... Oh. Who you would have invited and who you wouldn't have invited. I see. Well, I, in person games, I cap at... Or, like, Roll20 games, I cap at six. Mm -hmm. I've tried doing it with seven people, and it's really, really hard. Um, and I, I... I've played in campaigns where I like three to four players. It's very intimate. Uh, things go a lot faster. But I just... I kind of like bigger party dynamics as well because especially in combat I feel like three to four players it's very easy to get overwhelmed if you are not like fully prepared mm -hmm. and so when Eric was taking a break from DMing John was like well Morgan you DM can we do this evil campaign you just volunteer do you yeah and I was like sure and then he was like let's do Pathfinder and I was like I don't know Pathfinder <laughs> and then I was like oh I know somebody who does though so, I think if it was in person, it would have probably been you six. On a side note, if I was DMing and if you were one of the players, what would you play? Who would you play? Out of the already established characters? Or just like... If you want to make someone up, you can. But if, but sure, I guess if if I was DMing, who would... I guess, sure, of our established... Of all of the established characters, who would you be playing? Huh... Because um, I would love, to, I would, I would totally be down to DM sometime, but obviously, I would, I would love to play Scarlet again. Honestly, Scarlet's very Scarlet's good. Scarlet's fun. She's I very would, fun. I, I like Scarlet. I just don't have a lot of opportunities to interact with her. Yeah, that's totally fine. She's a busy woman. She is my, she's my bard character. When I did play her, she was true neutral, and her catchphrase was like, "Just go with the flow." Like she was literally down for anything. She got killed that by a pool like table. True. I'm sorry, what? We were in a dungeon, and in the middle of the dungeon there was a pool table, <clears throat> and Skylar went, wow, cool, a pool table, let's play, and everyone was like, wait, 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 and she hit the cue ball and it exploded and killed her. <laughs> or dropped her to zero, rather, because they brought her back. <laughs> pool tables almost as dangerous as gazebos am I right? <laughs> yep very true now me as a player I was like this is sus but as Scarlet <laughs> she was like yo man let's let's play <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I have had moments where I'm just like I'm on to you fuckers while <laughs> Cinnabar is like Okay. Yes. <laughs> My favorite is when absolutely nothing is happening, and you're like, Morgan, I see what you're doing. I'm like, uh, you see something that I don't, then. But it's very because fun. because if because if I was DMing, I'd put something in. That's the so thing. Like, is that yeah. So it's like if I'm DMing, I would put something in. So since you're DMing, I'm suspicious of you. See, that's how I keep you on your toes, because sometimes I take those opportunities, sometimes I don't, just let you guys stew. Like when uh, you're so, some of your NPCs, uh, like Zarya and uh, uh, Kira, are characters that are just straight from your writing. Mm -hmm. um, and as we talked about with a previous question, 
a lot of your characters, like Fendez and Falmea, um, are characters, or in Scarlet, are characters that you've previously played. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a character, and I, but to my memory, I can't think of any characters from um, your, the main story you write, Bizarre Adventures of a Half Elf. Mm-hmm. Would you, would you want to bring any, would you want to import anyone from Bizarre Adventures to Aurora Hills? I think yes, but it's a character that I haven't introduced yet. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, her name is Anne. She is a small vampire who likes, who, she's a kleptomaniac. So she's Kane. Uh, I don't know. Kane steals daggers, but she doesn't steal anything else. Anne will steal, like, anything she can get her hands uh, on. Um, so she's a goblin. Basically. Uh, but yeah, she, I think, would be one of the ones. But otherwise, I feel like because I'm kind of, I say actively, very, very loosely, I'm kind of actively writing that story, I feel like I want to keep that mainly separate from mm-hmm. the Wild Scar story. Though I have been writing very slowly a story of the founders and kind of like how they established Aurora Hills. Yeah. I had I had this whole thing that if Ash asked I I had it set up that if Ash asked about the um history about like what I knew, um I was gonna explain Cinnabar's version of the history of Aurora Hills uh, using chess pieces. Ah. And I sent it to Travis to see what Travis thought. And Travis is like, this looks really good, but there's one problem. Yeah? You forgot the knights. Because I had direct comparisons of, like, who the king, queen, bishops, oh, and yeah. rooks, and the pawns were. Oh, and I, I like... completely forgot that knights were a piece on a chessboard. Nice. Good job. So I just scrapped that and never oh. did anything with it. So I'm actually really curious to read that. Okay, all right. I'm really curious to read that. You could, you could also send that to me and I could, like, say how accurate... It doesn't exist anymore. Oh. Uh, I, I just... I, I was so sad that I just completely forgot about the knights. No. Uh, because I, I didn't know how to fix it, so I just deleted it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so my last question for you. Um, so, actually, we're both fans of Critical Role. Mm-hmm. Um, some of us have better taste than others and that we like Campaign 2 more than Campaign 1. <laughs> Um, and obviously, uh, I think we can agree that Matt Mercer is is an amazing TM. He is, he is. Um, if Matt Mercer were to voice a character from Wildscar, doesn't matter if it's a player or an NPC, who would you want and why? Oh gosh, I was thinking of NPC. So like... Well, uh, well, let's do both. We can do do a player character and an NPC. That'll be fun. I think um, he would be very good at voicing sign. I know nobody has had any interact. Well, you've had some interaction with him very briefly. Uh, Jean Paul, Cinnabar, and Badrick all three had very brief interactions with him, mm-hmm. and they were all very angry interactions. But for the character that I have in my head, I think. Because also, I, and now see now now that I, because I I can hear I when I when I'm imagining the picture you have of him, I can I can imagine that now. He's also a gunslinger. I so he's McCree. I <laughs> just imagining the McCree boy. <laughs> yeah, basically not like exactly, but like kind of similar. But in that respect, I think he'd also be good as Syrian. Because imagine him switching voices. It'd be very good. That's such untapped potential, right? Like and like and like, or even um, if because obviously, like, uh, if he was DMing it, he'd have a lot better control of it, right? And so, he, like, he, I mean, like, could, I can imagine like a scene where he's just like, "And you think you're gonna take me down with a <laughs> lollipop, <laughs> like that kind of thing?" And just <laughs> like constantly crooks back and oh, forth, gosh. and goes back and forth between the like, um. <sighs> How, how, remind me, how much are you into Borderlands? 
I played the second game, but not super into it. Did you ever play as Creek? No. Um, so, cause but if I'm you, familiar with it. Because both when you're playing as Creek, as well as in Borderlands 3 with the new DLC, mm-hmm. where Creek is the main character, um, there are two sides to Creek. There's the psycho side and the sane side, and they oh, both yes. have the same voice actor. Okay. Um, and in Borderlands 2, when you're playing as him, um, it's mostly the psycho side, but occasionally you'll hear lines from the sane side. And then, um, but as like reactions, where he's like, like, I'm gonna slice off your nipples and put them on a pizza! Jesus, did I just say that out loud? Like, <laughs> um, meanwhile, like, in Borderlands 3, like, they're, they're two separate characters. Mm-hmm. Which is, again, kind of why I thought of thinking of Siri and, and they have conversations. And I could totally imagine if, I could totally imagine oh, Matt Mercer sure. doing that. That'd be so cool. They, uh, there is a Deadwood miniseries that Critical Role does where Brian Foster DMs and Matt plays in it. And they're, it's very Western. They all dress up and they just, he's very good at like the, that kind of style. So, yeah, it's just... Both gunslingers think of very McCree different things, but I, I feel like he would be he would be very good at um, kind of getting into those characters. I really like how he does both um, Mary and Lavore. Yes. As well as does... Um, what's the name of the, the witch? So, there's a witch character he voices, and also... Marion, I think, would be really interesting doing that kind of a voice. I always like when he does Marion, how he always, like, oh, he wraps I, his I, cardigan around yes. his head. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, because, like, I, 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 I kind of love that whole, um, I get kind of senses of that from Lily, too, where it's very much, like, you know, yeah, I'm kind of, like, it, visually, she's very kind of, like, hot and sexy, but it's also one of those, like, I also have standards and don't want people constantly staring at me when I'm not performing. Yeah. Um. But when, I think the voice he does for Marion or the voice he does for the witch, I think would be interesting for, um, for, actually I think of the witch for, um, Bella, because I also don't know about as much about her, mm-hmm. but I'm imagining Mary, I, when I, when you talk as Falmea, I imagine Marion's voice. Okay. That's, that's what my brain says. That's fine. That's, that's probably fine. wrong. I, I'm just really bad at accents, honestly, but you think of their voices however you want. <laughs> How if, do you? If they that? have a cool accent, that works for me. I feel like Temperance has a little bit of an accent. Like, like kind of like a thicker accent. I imagine him with, like, a German accent. Yeah, like, kind of German, Russian, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, he could probably voice Bella really well as well. She's mm-hmm. kind of, she's very sultry. I just realized... Falmia and Falmia and Arabella have met each other. I would, I was like, I would be legit afraid when they, if they met each other. Oh wait, they have. They have met each other. That's why. Yeah, they did. Falmia did not like her. She was like, I've heard of your shit. She was like, you're a witch of the waste. And Bella was like, don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't call me that. I don't like your shit. I'm gonna steal your boyfriend. <laughs> okay. It's half. But she stole half of him. <laughs> Just the, you a bitch, I'm going to steal your boyfriend. She didn't do it too specifically know, for her, but yeah. But it's funny, it's funny out of context. I know. Alright, well, uh, thank you for answering my questions. Yeah, thanks for having me. This will be fun, fun to have at the end of my, my thing. Yeah. Also, link for Morgan's shit. Go check her shit out. Thanks. I don't know how to end this. Uh... Lunar, laser, like, star, shine, subscribe, moonbeam bell, all the things I normally do. I don't know why I'm doing this. Yeah, I do.